Marcus Aurelius, 121 to 180 AD, one of the favorite philosophers of many of our students. So Marcus Aurelius, you see on the bottom left, meditations. That's what your uh, journals are based upon, what he wrote called meditations. So he was a Stoic philosopher. We'll talk about what Stoicism means. Um, and he was actually a king of Rome. He was a philosopher king. But he wasn't like a corrupt, I just want a harem philosopher king like Plato, um, what you guys had talked about. He was the emperor of Rome, and he was actually like out in the battlefield. And he used his Stoic philosophy to remain as calm as he could during the war. And he was known for being a very well thought out, um, honorable man. And so while he's literally going throughout Europe, fighting, engaged in war, at nighttime he would write down his what he called his meditations. It was his thoughts on his life and what he had learned, and it's some of the greatest wisdom that we have um, from this time period. So Stoicism is a philosophy that originally came from Greece, the philosopher Zeno, and the quote, which it really summarizes it, man conquers the world by conquering himself. How do we control what happens? We don't. Is life fair? No, it's not. We have the ability, though, to conquer ourselves. We can choose to think what we want to think. Stoicism teaches people how to be calm and brave when they're going through tough times, going through anxiety. It uses reason and rationale. And probably, in my opinion, of all the philosophies, Stoicism is one of the most relevant. There's a... Um, a guy named Ryan Holiday, who's really done a lot with Stoicism online. So, here's something I found, which kind of sums up a few different things. Some things are not in our control. In fact, I would argue, and the Stoics would, almost nothing is in our control. What is in our control? Now, Epictetus says, not in our power are the body, power, property, reputation, offices, in a word, whatever are not our own acts. Only the way we act, our attitude, our thoughts... Those are the only things we can control. Right at the bottom of those four points. Bitterness will not get a person well. Bitterness or envy or resentment are never one's fate. They are always the choice of the individual. In other words, life is going to deal you a bad hand from time to time. Sometimes the garden hose gets you wet. We choose, though, whether or not to be bitter, bitter or envy or resentful. We make that choice. It's the only thing we truly do control. So a little image, this kind of shows um, Marcus Aurelius is from Gladiator. If you've seen Gladiator uh, with uh, Russell Crowe, uh, Marcus Aurelius is uh, the Richard Harris older um, king. I believe it's Richard Harris. And here are some characteristics of a, of a stoic a person. Somebody who's virtuous and calm, focuses on what they can control, accepts fate graciously. Now that's one interesting, we'll talk about what fate refers to. So, here's the main point of Stoicism. To control our emotions. To have more self-control. And to maybe not have as many destructive emotions. Everybody loves happiness. But think about the other really destructive emotions that we have that exist just in our head. Marcus really said that in a world that's always changing, the only thing you can control truly is your thoughts. And when you think about it, if the one thing that people cannot control is their minds. They just say, I can't do it, I can't do it. You don't know the way my mind works. The one thing they can control is their minds and they don't try. The rest of the world they have no control of, and yet people have anxiety because they try to control what they can't. Marcus Aurelius felt it is our thoughts, not the things themselves which cause us to be happy or not. Maybe it rains and you have, you're kicking and screaming because you wanted to go outside. Or maybe it rains and you realize now you're going to have flowers next month. You control the way you think. If we can think about things properly and control our desires, our emotions, we can be happy. Stoicism, they're not going to be jumping for joy, but there's an inward calm in Stoicism. Now Stoicism points, recognize what you can and cannot control. You determine your reaction to a crisis. Ignore people who are dealing with negative emotions. All you have to do is sit at the cafeteria table and you can hear everybody just railing off in their, all their grievances against the world. Master yourself and aim to be virtuous. Now, it's interesting. I learned Stoicism in high school. I had to do it for a project, I think sophomore year. 
And I thought stoicism was literally having no emotions. And I taught my younger brother, don't have any emotions. And he's one of those people who's generally pretty chill until all of a sudden he explodes because he's full of all of his emotions. I completely misunderstood it. It's not saying to not have emotions. It's saying to use philosophy and wisdom to control your emotions. If I get angry and I punch a wall, does that really do any good? At some point we realize the destructive nature of our actions and our thoughts. We realize we can control those and then we move on from those destructive emotions. The absence of passion, you see the Marcus on his horse, apathia. Apathia is what Marcus felt was the goal, which is to control your emotions and your desires. Well, most people want passion. If it's passionate, it's good. It's full of emotion. And that's what the Stoics, Stoics want to do. They want to take the emotion out of it. They understand that unhappiness and discomfort and pain, these are in your mind, or they're definitely made worse in your mind. Even if you can't control what happens, you can control your attitude. I've talked about this before, but the difference between being alone and being lonely is your mindset. If you're alone, that's a fact. You are by yourself. When you're lonely, it's when you wish you weren't. Pain it exists. Suffering happens when you wish there wasn't pain. You can control that wishing. And the Stoics basically, in a way, urged people in their way to pull on the big boy pants and to realize that you are the controller of your thoughts and emotions. And with that, you can control the world. Fate. A lot of people have an issue with this. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Fate, Marcus really said, the world's always changing, and therefore you must live in the present. Many philosophers take it there. But the Stoics said that, you know what, sometimes life is beyond our control. And since we can't control things, why get so worked up? Bad thing happens, we got to kind of deal with it. Whatever happens, happens. Life does what life does. There's no point in complaining about it. It is your fate that this happened. Now, two different mindsets. Some people see fate as if you're destined to do something, as if you are on a track and you have no choice. Some people consider that fate. This is saying, as a statement of fact, whatever has happened to you has happened to you. It is your fate. Whether it was destined or not, whatever just happened is the most real thing that is. We can kick and scream and say it's not fair, it's not right, that's just our opinion, man. <laughs> Some other fun facts about the Stoics. They believe in the Logos, going back to our early philosopher Heraclitus, that there's an order in the universe. Um, and basically saying our lives are not our own. But at the bottom, I like this part. Um, we are actors playing roles we do not choose, and our duty is to play them as best we can, knowing that our fate is part of a much larger order. In other words... You don't ask for life to do what life does, but life is definitely in control. When we get to Seneca, he'll give the example of the chariot and the dog, and who's who's dragging who. Amor fatigue. Keep calm and amor fatigue. Amor fatigue is a Latin phrase. It means love of your faith. It's an attitude that looks at the worst things that have happened and and begins to accept them, realizing that they have made you into who you are. Amorphity means loving your fate, which is your life. Now, it's hard to do that. Love thy fate. The Stoics said, you know what? A lot of times, we don't get what we deserve. Life is not fair. I don't know who told me life was fair. I don't know who told you life is fair. But we all assume it is. We get really upset when life does not cooperate in the manner it should. The Stoics believe... If you can take control of a situation, you should, but a lot of times, fate is going to do what fate is going to do. Whatever cards you have to play, you have to play them, and it doesn't matter, you know, even if something does matter, the Stoics believe sometimes there isn't anything you can do. You have to accept it, the no crying over spilled milk. So a more for tea. Is this something that you can grasp? I like this a lot. You either get bitter or you get better. It's that simple. You either take what has been dealt to you and allow it to make you a better person, or you allow it to tear you down. The choice does not belong to fate. It belongs to you. I like that a lot. The choice that belongs to fate is whatever happens. 
whatever happens, you got in an accident or something, something terrible happened or something great happens, you now have the choice. I saw a UFC fighter. He said, I either, I either win or I learn. In other words, losing is where you learn. You either get bitter or you get better. A lot of people take all of the things that have happened to them and they put them in a backpack and they run up and down the stairs of life and wonder why they get so tired because they're carrying all of that. Others can take that, that, that backpack full of terrible things and they can use it as rocket fuel. Instead of an anchor to drag us down or a backpack to weigh on our shoulders, they use it as rocket fuel as a way to motivate them. Instead of having it build up walls, it tears down walls. So quotations of Marcus Aurelius, he has a number of them and I'll talk about them. Probably the, the biggest one, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Uh, Stoicism, more than any other philosophy other than the Eastern philosophies, needs to be applied. It doesn't just need to be, oh, okay, I understand that for the test. There's no tests. You have power over your not mind, not outside events. Stop bitching about the outside events and realize the way you're looking at it and dealing with it is where you need to make amends. If you are pained or bothered by any external thing, it is not this that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. And it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. In other words, an event happens, an event you have no control about, over. If it disturbs you, that's on you. That's how, because you're thinking about it in a certain way. You're the only one who's thinking those thoughts, and you're only the one who's having those thoughts. You have the power to erase those thoughts. That's a mind control thing, and most people will say, oh, no, I can't do it. If you really examine the event happens, how you adjust to it is on you. And that choice is what your life will become. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. How much time he saves who does not look to see what his neighbor says or does or thinks. Um, we are cursed to live in a society where we care what people think about us. The episode of, uh, of uh, Black Mirror... Um, the nosedive illustrates this in an amazing way, but we live in a society where you learn who you are by what you think others think about you. It's insanity. Gandhi said, never let people with dirty feet walk through your soul. But we care so much about what other people think about us. We give other people the key to how we feel about ourselves. Marcus Aurelius was able to think about this and become a person who just cared about his own opinion of himself and doing what was right and everything else would take care of itself. No matter what anyone says or does, my task is to be good. Beautiful things of any kind are beautiful in themselves and sufficient to themselves. Praise is irrelevant. Does anything genuinely beautiful need supplementing? Are they improved by being praised or damaged by contempt? Is an admiral suddenly flawed if no one admires it? This concept is about praise is irrelevant. Most people like to get praise. I had a student say praise is kind of like dessert. I don't need it, but it's, it's nice. But if you need praise, that means you need somebody else to give you an external affirmation that you're doing a good job. You're the dog who needs a pat on the head to, to be told you're doing well. If you're truly beautiful and you know you're doing, as he says, my task is to be good. If you do the best you can, how can you worry about what other people think? It was the best you can do. A quote I have used, used in my past, all I can do is the best I can do, and if you don't like it, um, something about you. Our inward power turns obstacles into fuel. What's thrown on top of a fire is absorbed, consumed by it, and makes it burn still higher. Obstacles turning into fuel. The, uh, one of the great Stoic lines, uh, and uh, Ryan Holiday's done a lot with this online, the obstacle becomes the path. You don't want that big obstacle that's gotten in your way. But you know what? Life has placed it there. Your job now is to go over, under, sideways, to go through that obstacle. You don't want to. You can kick and scream, or you can have the realization that through going through that obstacle, which is now your path, you will be transformed into something else. That obstacle is going to change you in ways. Some of them, it's sort of the idea when you're going through hell, keep going. But the idea of, of um, stoicism 
is that we have a choice in whether or not we take the, the good things that happen to us and the bad things that happen to us, how we react to them. Be like a rocky cliff against which the restless surf continually pounds. I hear you say, how unlucky that this should happen to me. Not at all. Say instead, how lucky that I am not broken by what has happened and am not afraid of what is about to happen. The same blow might have struck anyone, but not many would have absorbed it without giving up or complaint. It's a way of shifting your perception, shifting your mindset. Instead of thinking how unlucky or how unfair it is, and it might be, it doesn't matter what you think, those are just opinions. If instead you shift your opinion into the what doesn't kill you makes you stronger mindset, all of a sudden you are strengthened in future events, you know you can withstand any storm because you already have. A line I use a lot, is you cannot control the waves, but you can learn to surf. The waves are the waves of life, what life throws at you. Learning to surf is learning to deal with whatever's happened. That's, a, that's changing your, your mindset. It's learning how to be the big boat that floats. The point of life is to accept whatever nature sends you. Whatever the universe assigns to any man at any time is for the good of that man at that time. Every event is the right one. Look closely and you'll see. Keep looking closely like that and embody it in your actions. Keep it to everything you do. This is a morphity. This is saying whatever thing just happened, even if it was terrible, it was meant to be. It was the right thing for you at this time. And most people say BS. They don't want to hear that. That bad event that's happening, they don't want it. And we never do. But those bad events are, give us like the sandpaper of life, the curriculum that builds us into something else. The way of shifting your perception and taking what life throws at, uh, throws at you and accepting it and working with it, that's what the Stoics taught was a better way than to kick and scream and cry and complain, which achieves nothing.